guys, welcome back to Colonel McDougal's podcast update video. Uh, what do you guys think about me calling this a podcast? Because aren't podcasts normally multiple people? Like at least two people. I just call it a podcast because I don't know what else to call this. Eh, anyways, alright guys, so we got a few things to talk about here. Uh, I want to hit on, uh, I've got some new items for the backdrop here. Uh, I'm going to, at some point guys, really really would like to make a bigger like shelving bookcase type thing uh because i want to display some things because you can see i have a poster back here that's a uh, black clover for anybody that doesn't know uh the character sticking out on the side there but uh yeah so i want to hit some of those new items for the collection guys uh, i've got even some comic books i want to talk about then we're going to talk about Cowboy Bebop and the Netflix adaptation, which this is personal, guys. This is very personal for me because <laughs> uh, I hate to say it, but I 100% believe Netflix is going to screw up Cowboy Bebop, and that makes me so mad. And you guys are probably like, so what? What if they mess up, you know, this cartoon made for kids, blah, 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 blah. All right, for one thing, guys, you have to understand that most anime, you know, Japanese animations truly are not meant for children. And on top of that, guys, their culture is different from our Western culture, especially here in the United States. Uh, that's one thing I really don't understand about people nowadays is, oh, colonialism, we shouldn't make other nations into us. But hey, Japan, you should become us. Get rid of how you do your animes and cartoons. It's it's which 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 way are we we going with this people you can't have them both if you're not gonna force people but you're trying to force people you do not see the irony here you're not okay anyways that's a lost argument i'm sure but moving on the reason why the cowboy bebop anime guys is special to me it's dear to my heart uh, we'll go into uh, more detail about this later on, but the cartoon I'm working on, Black Chain Shadow Strife, if you haven't figured it out, it's a cyberpunk story. And the main character, Shibaru, I took a lot, and I mean a lot of his character, from Spike Spiegel, the main character of Cowboy Bebop. And again, guys, we'll talk about this more later on in this uh, podcast update. But yeah, Cowboy Bebop is one of my favorite all-time animes. It's in my top five. So <laughs> Netflix, oh, 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 Netflix, you are going to screw this up. Anyways, guys, let's get into the happier part of this. And we're going to talk about uh, me upping my collection of stuff that you see here in the back. Uh, in the last update video, guys, we talked about this. I've got some Star Wars, uh, a lot of Batman stuff back here. Uh, Naruto, uh, some Marvel stuff, and just real quick, guys, Batman is my personal favorite, and this comes from, uh, in American comics and all. Batman is my favorite, but I'm still a big fan of multiple other comic book characters. Spider Man was one of my bigger ones, Iron Man was one of my bigger ones. Thor is not comic book thor is one of my favorites but actual norse mythology and if you guys have never seen the tattoo i have it's a tattoo of the true design of mjolnir on the side of my shoulder here uh i love norse mythology in fact part of black chain shadow strife is based off of norse mythology that's one of the things that i uh, use to create the setting for black chain shadow strife and You'll learn more about that when the uh, cartoon actually comes out, but uh, let's move on. Uh, the comics here, so these are some comics I've had for a little while, guys. If you can see these pretty well. That's uh, Berserk, which is pretty good. The last run in which this is really good, but really depressing. I can't wait uh, to read more because I only have the first issue of this. And then a couple Batman comics here. We have the Dark Detective series. Uh, I'm still trying to get through. Oop. I got a berserk out of order there. But yeah, that's all those guys. And these are just recent I've picked up. Guys, I don't have a collection of super rare comics. I just, I don't, I don't. Uh, when I was younger, I didn't understand that they could be worth money. So practically all the comics I had when I was a child are 
MIA. Either they were given to friends of the family or I threw them away at some point. And yeah, yeah, guys, I'm, I'm pretty mad about that. One of the Spider-Man issues that's worth a pretty good amount of money right now. Uh, I don't remember which one it's called, but where he lifts up the collapsed subway station uh, and he's thinking to myself uh, to himself that you know he's not as strong as Thor he's not as strong as the Incredible Hulk he can't lift it up and he does I had that original comic that was in my possession and I got rid of it at some point so ah, it is what it is but let's talk about the new comics and I just picked these up earlier today guys I haven't even had a chance to read them yet so I'm pretty excited about this and uh, first one here is the Superman 78. Uh, this is based on the Christopher Reeves movies. That's why it's 78, which I love those movies. I'm even a fan of uh, the crazy, what was it, the third one? Yeah, I think it was the third one where it's just really weird and he fights an alternate version of himself that's not himself. Anyways, yeah, uh, I, I like them. I, I know it's a garbage movie, guys. I just personally like them. Come at me. <laughs> Uh, so there's that. Then there's Batman 89, the Tim Burton and uh, Michael Keaton movie. Oh my gosh, guys. I grew up watching this movie. This came out when I was a kid and I loved it. This is probably what made me fall in love with Batman uh, was the uh, first uh, Michael Keaton, Tim Burton movie uh, where he fights the Joker. Uh, what was that guy's name? Uh, uh, Jack Nicholson. Yeah, Jack Nicholson. Boy, the Joker. Yeah. So we've got that. And then I'm trying to get into the I Am Batman, which is a new series where the son of Lucius Fox takes over the mantle of Batman. I keep hearing really good things about this, and I'm super excited, guys. Uh, I love the idea of Lucius Fox. I like that character and finding out that his son, um, other than, I guess, like uh, Dick Grayson, uh, Damian Wayne, and then Terry McGinnis later on, that this uh, character has a chance to become Batman. And I'm actually more excited about him becoming Batman than any of the others because it's kind of like a, well, yeah, no crap they would become the next Batman. You know, uh, Terry McGinnis was a clone of Batman. Yeah, no crap. This guy is not a super soldier, super ninja. He's just the son of some dude, as far as I know. So that could change, guys. I haven't read it yet because I just picked these up, just pulled them out of the bag, and this is the first time I'm looking at it at home. So I'm pretty excited about this uh, series to get into it, but all right, let's move on from that. Uh, this is a part of that art, guys. It's uh, Batman the Second Son, which I'm assuming that's Lucius Fox, and I guess that's his son. I don't... Again, I don't know. I haven't pulled. I haven't actually read these yet. I just picked them up, so I'm pretty excited to read this. Ooh, I mean, I'm getting tingly. I haven't felt this way about comics in years, guys. Years, and I'm so glad I'm finally getting back into what I used to love as a kid. But yeah, so I've got those. I'm missing the second comic. So I've got uh, the first four of the Second Son, or sorry, three of four, and I'm missing issue number two, and I had to order that at my local comic book shop, so I should get it uh, relatively soon, but I'm going to hold off reading these so I get that second one so I can read everything straight through, but we'll move on from that. Um, that looks like that's it, and we have another one of the uh, Second Son story there, but so wait a minute. Oh, I'm getting myself confused. Okay, I thought I had more than I didn't. I don't. So those are the new comics guys I picked up. Again, I'm trying to build my comic book collection. So we'll see uh, from here where I'm able to go with it. I figured guys, I will live alone. Why not? To heck with it, F it. Uh, I'm gonna start collecting comics again. And no one can stop me, ha! Uh, next thing on the menu is I've got two pretty big things uh, statue wise and figure wise. Uh, I'm a huge John Wick fan, uh, Keanu Reeves, dude, shout out, man, holy crap, these movies are amazing, and you people can go to hell that say, you know, they didn't need anything past the first movie, no, I love the second movie, and I love the third movie, I'm hoping the fourth one is still just a, uh, get out there and kick some ass, uh, pardon my French, but, with that said, this is another, uh, nice little addition I'm gonna put in the background here, guys. See if you can see that there. It's from the second movie when he's in the catacombs. 
Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. He pulls a shotgun from like a ledge in the uh, catacombs. Ah, I can't wait to put that thing up. Again, I, I need to get uh, some sort of shelving unit, something or other, so I can set all this stuff on there. But that's one thing I got, guys. So I'm pretty excited to have that in my collection. Uh, now, this next thing, guys, this is another anime that's dear to my heart. Um, trying to remember the name of the website I used to use years ago. I think it was animemusicvideos.net or .org. I don't remember, but people could just upload music videos of any anime with any song, and you'd find stuff on there. Remember, guys, I'm in my mid-30s, so uh, it's older music, so like Coldplay, um, The Fray, Linkin Park, and stuff like that. Britney Spears, and they had a lot of Britney Spears songs done uh, to anime music videos. I actually uploaded a song, uh, Linkin Park, Somewhere I Belong, uh, the first movie for Fist of the North Star with Kinshiro. Kinshiro is one of my all-time favorite anime characters, guys. You know, I, I love that. Oh, man, that gets me pumped. But pretty excited about this, guys, and I, I want to share this with you. So... Found this at uh, the mall here. We have a little pop culture store, and they had this bad boy on display, so I went ahead and picked it up. That is fantastic, guys. It, it costs a pretty penny, not gonna lie. It's far more expensive than I should have ever bought. But I love Kenjiro. He is uh, one of the most manliest men in anime, and come on, who doesn't like that? Attacking stuff. Uh, it's up there with, uh, if you guys have seen JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, I believe it's on Netflix right now. Uh, the Star Platinum stand that the main character uses, Joe Star. Uh, I think that's his name, Joe Star. Or was his name? No, he had a different name, didn't he? I'm getting my characters confused because there's like six or seven different JoJo's. Anyways, uh, Star Platinum, his. I 100% believe they got that from uh, uh, Kinshiro's. Because it's the same type thing. Uh, I could be wrong about that. But, alright. So moving on, guys. Those are things very near and dear to my heart that I wanted to share with you. And I'm pretty excited, again, to get back into comics. Uh, guys, I love comics. I grew up reading Spider-Man. You know, whenever my parents could afford it, they would always pick me up a Spider-Man, a Batman. Or uh, I think I uh, had a few Iron Man, even. And those were my big three growing up. I had uh, one or two others. But those three, Batman, Iron Man, Spider-Man, those were my top three. In fact, I probably had more toys of Iron Man than anything, just because if you guys remember the old 90s cartoon of Iron Man, uh, he had so many damn different suits in that cartoon that my parents would always pick one up whenever they could. And shout out to mom and dad. Thank you. Anyways, so... Moving on, guys, talking about everything near and dear to my heart, we are going to go deep into this Netflix debacle. And yes, I am calling it a debacle. Because I got a feeling they are going to screw up every single one of these characters. Guys, Spike Spiegel, Jet Black, Faye Valentine, Ed, and uh, Ayn. I got a feeling they're going to make this into some sort of political bullcrap that none of us really want to see. And you guys could argue that politics have always been in every sort or facet of entertainment, but here lately it's almost like if I don't like it 100% and I'm like hitting my head into a wall about how much I love it, then I'm some sort of weird, crazy Nazi, racist, homophobic, whatever. It's like, no, I just, just no, no, but, uh, we're going to talk about this, and let's see if I can hit the right sequence here. Let's pop that up, and then let's pop this up. Okay, so this is, guys, and again, you're looking over here. I'm looking over here, so forgive me if I point in the wrong direction. But uh, this is Cowboy Bebop. This is the anime I knew uh, long before even I was a big Dragon Ball Z fan back in the day. Um, we'll talk more about that later, but there are four animes that I absolutely loved growing up before I even knew what Dragon Ball was. So we'll get to that after we talk about this. But this is Cowboy Bebop, guys. 
let me let me point over here but uh this is cowboy bebop all these characters i love they're near and dear to my heart in fact uh spike's main villain which is vicious is one of my favorite villains period and he is up there to me with sephiroth the joker you know all of those like when you think of a villain these are the people you think about and because they're just so well written and you love to hate them vicious is right up there he's one of my favorite villains guys again up there with sephiroth up there with the joker ah oh, top tier you, you just can't beat them uh so yeah and we're gonna talk about why i think this is gonna be a debacle guys and you may or may not know about the issue going on and i know i have a lot of uh uh, I don't know what they call normie friends that don't get into comic books. Like I'm the guy that talks about comics and hopes people listen to me <laughs> because I know how bad they screw things up. And manga and anime as well. I don't mean just comic books. The so manga and anime as well. But uh, we're going to take a look at Faye Valentine's uh, outfit. And you guys can see all along here, you know, uh, Faye Valentine is portrayed as a very beautiful young feminine woman and why is she portrayed like that why is she walking around with her breasts hanging out her belly button showing and you know pants just above her you know her her V you know her 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 vagina and uh yeah do you guys know why females are credited with being the greatest assassins in the in our history in the in the real world history why they are so that way i'll give you a hint it's not because they can physically beat a man into submission that's not it i'm sorry black widow is a great character but it would take one hell of a woman to fight a, a full-grown special forces man and I'm going to be real with you guys. I don't think that's out there. I don't think there is a special forces female that could take out a special forces male. Now, don't get me wrong. That special forces female could whoop my butt any day of the week. I have no qualms, no problems admitting that, guys. I don't, I'm not one of those macho men out there that's like, women can't hurt me. Ah, can't make me a sandwich. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. Why is that the first thing people jump to? I'm just saying that there are physical differences with men and women. Now, get back on topic here. The reason why females are credited with being some of the greatest assassins in our real world history, because of deception. Because they can get close to a man without raising alarm. And you know what allows them to get close to a man? Their beauty. The way they act. The way they conduct themselves. And let's take a look before we uh, move on here. Let's take a look at some actual female assassins here. That These are real women. These are not fictional characters. These are real women. Uh, we're going to take a look at this lady. Uh... Charlotte Corday's assassination of Marit changed the perception of women. And guys, again, I want you to read this. And I want you to read it for yourselves. See why she's credited with this. She was known as the angel of assassination for killing her target, the Jacobin leader Jean-Paul Marat, uh, July 13, 1793. Uh, during the reign of terror, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so she claimed claiming she had information of an unsurprising elsewhere in France. She pretty much lied to him and say, hey, come to me, I have information. And I bet you guys, this was not a woman who wore a tank top and flexed her bicep every moment she could. No, she used her feminine wiles to pull this guy in. And let's continue reading here. Elsewhere in France, stabbed him with a kitchen knife in revenge for massacres. Does, does it say she, she pulled out like some crazy judo? No, she stabbed him with a knife. Guys, I don't know if you've ever done martial arts. I've, I've got around about 10 years experience doing martial arts. And no, it's nothing to brag about. I just did it for 10 years. To use a knife... 
And I'm assuming this is a knife, not a dagger, not a short sword, a knife. If you don't understand what I mean by that, her kitchen knife was probably smaller than this thing. And this is just my regular old carry pocket knife, guys. What is that, like a six inch blade, I believe? So she, she might have had a six inch blade, but it was probably like half the size of this thing. You have to get in close, guys, to make this effective. Get in close. She didn't knock him down and then stab him. She got in close. She went, oh, you know, oh, Mr. Jean-Paul. Oh, bam! Oh, eat it, son! That's what she did. And I don't understand this whole world where women have to be just as macho as men. It's like, okay, I have no problem if you're a female that wants to be macho. But by God, you got to understand your strengths and weaknesses. Just the way the world is. Anyways, I'm done talking about that, guys. Uh, again, just look at this thing, guys. This is all full of women. Look, this lady is a famous assassin because she poisoned someone. Not because she beat a man into a submission. And look at this one. Uh, this chick, uh, where does it say? He shot before shooting him three times. He didn't beat him into the submission. I'm sorry, Wonder Woman, but this is the way it is. It's the feminine wile. It's the thing of, wow, this girl is beautiful. She's petite. Man, I could, I could make love to this woman. Oh my gosh, I want to hold her in my arms. And that's when a woman strikes her hardest. When a man drops his guard. And says, I want to make babies. And the woman goes, no, you're not making babies. Kills his ass right there. But I'm talking about all these guys because we're going to move on to Faye Valentine's character in Cowboy Bebop. All right. So let's pull this up. And there are more females, guys, but it's all the same. Uh, this chick was known to seduce policemen prior to attack. And you know, she would kill uh, during all of that. Another woman, uh, she was uh, orchestrated assassination of a Roman emperor, I believe. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Anyways, Faye Valentine's character, guys. All right, let's take a look at something here. So this is her profile about uh, who Faye Valentine is in the anime. Not the Netflix adaptation, the anime. And we're going to talk about this right here. This is Faye Valentine's like number one characteristic. She is good at flirting with and seducing men to further her goals. Hates feeling desired and is rarely seen romantically interested in someone else. So, she's pissed off at men for finding her attractive, but she uses her attraction to pull men in and do exactly what those women, <laughs> what those women did in the uh, history lesson we just had. And it's all over the world, guys. That's that's how women operate. I, I'm a big fan of fiction, guys, but we have to separate reality from fiction at some point. And this character is more realistic. Faye Valentine is more realistic. Black Widow, uh, Wonder Woman, Huntress, any of those other comic book females, Domino. Um, yeah, Jean Grey. I just, it angers me. This is a more re realistic woman. This is real. We just read about stuff like this that real women did. She didn't have a handy arm blaster super kung fu martial arts. She seduces them because they go, I want to touch them boobies. Ha! Oh, it aggravates me so much that realistic depictions of women are hated more than anything else. I don't get it. Uh, but yeah, this is a main characteristic of her. She does it several times throughout the anime. In fact, there's even, I think, a casino sequence at some point where she's just seducing men left and right to be able to get to a bounty. And it's, it's incredible to watch because she plays them for a fool. No ifs, ands, or buts. I mean, those guys are hook, line, and sinkered. But yeah, just the way it is. Now, why am I bringing this up, I ask? Or you're going to ask me that? Why am I bringing this up? Here we go. 
This is, uh, I think her name is Daniela Pineda? Pinata? Forgive me, guys. I'm butchering that. I know I am. But uh, she's a beautiful woman. Absolutely beautiful. She could easily play a Faye Valentine character that is uh, seductress, you know, uh, succubus, if you will. That's exactly what Faye Valentine is. And I think this lady is incredibly beautiful. I think she would easily, easily play this role very, very well. But let's take a look at this. This is her outfit, guys. Okay? This is her outfit. This compared to that. As a male, as a straight, red-blooded male, you know, hold your thoughts on this, guys. Because I know where it's going to go. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But I am far more attracted to that, and I would be way more susceptible to this than I would oops, to that. The woman came at me showing skin. Oh my gosh. She came at me wearing everything's covered up. She even has gloves on. Like, what? What? What are you trying to do? You, you look like a woman that's, you know, I meet at Walmart. You don't look anything special. This woman is beautiful. Look at this. She is a gorgeous, strong-looking woman. And I'm sure she's in smart, too, guys. A very uh, a little-known fact about most actors are they are incredibly smart. Uh, the ability to memorize their scripts, guys, it takes a lot of brain power to memorize those scripts. And there's a lot of actors out there that have, like, law degrees, scientific degrees that we just don't know about because we only know their uh, acting accomplishments. But this woman is beautiful. She can easily portray Faye Valentine in the truest sense of the word. Not, I don't know what this is. I got a feeling what they're going to end up doing is they're going to turn her into another fighter, just like Spike. Uh, probably in the middle of Spike being like a street fighter martial artist and Jet Black being uh, kind of like a... Uh, I don't know what to describe him as. Kind of like a, a brawler, like a bar, uh, maybe more like a bouncer brawler because uh, he's an ex-cop. So he's not a martial artist like Spike. He is just a, a cop that's good at what he does. You know, shooting, punching, that's, that's, that's what uh, Jet does. My guess is they're going to put her on par with Spike. There's probably even going to be a scene at some point, guys, where they make her out to be better than Spike in hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat and all. And a, probably a better shot than Jet, even. Because that was kind of the thing. Is that's why they were a good pair. Is I remember Jet using guns more than punching and Spike uh, punching more than shooting guns. But they both did uh, both things. Uh, and it has been a while since I've seen the anime, but... Yeah, I just, I got a feeling they're going to ruin this character and they're going to make some statement out there about how this is the greatest female character ever and uh, like Alita Battle Angel, yeah, you know, you know that wasn't a female character. This isn't a real female character. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, I'm so sick of this political garbage right now, guys. I just want to enjoy entertainment again. <laughs> that's all. That's all. Uh, So... Let's move on from that, guys, because this is honestly depressing to me. So, all right, let's see if I hit the right buttons here. Boop and boop. Uh, one of the things we're going to move on to, guys, and I kind of hinted at this at the beginning of the video, is there are four big animes that I used to love before I knew even Dragon Ball Z. And I love Dragon Ball Z, guys. Uh, I haven't really gotten into Super just because my interests have moved away, and there's only so many times I can see Goku... Get a new power up, get beat down, gain a new power up, get beat down, gain a new power up. There's only so many times I can see that, people. I love Goku. I love Vegeta, Piccolo, Trunks, all of them. I love them. But there's only so many times you can watch the same uh, formula over and over and over again. But my four big ones before I was a Dragon Ball Z fan. Uh, first and foremost being Roroni Kenshin. Uh, if you guys have never seen the Roroni Kenshin anime, there's an OVA series. Uh, there's Trust and Betrayal, and then Reflections, I think, is uh, 
Trust and Betrayal Parts 1 and 2. Reflections, I believe, is Parts 3 and 4. Or was it just Part 3? I don't remember. Really good OVAs. And the animation in there is amazing. Oh my gosh, they're great. But the old Roroni Kenshin uh, anime. Uh, I think it started in the late 80s and finished sometime in the mid-90s. It's a great anime, guys. Never seen it. Check it out. Uh, um, next to that, guys, is Trigon. Trigon with Vash the Stampede. Oh my gosh, I love that. Uh, Wolfwood still makes me cry to this day. And if you guys have never seen it, I don't want to spoil Wolfwood. Uh, but yeah, he's got one of the most touching sequences in any series, fiction, whatever. It's one of the best. Like, you know, that was probably the first time other than uh optimus prime dying yeah yeah give me all the hell you want uh other than optimus prime dying it's probably one of the first times that like a cartoon or something made me cry and i'm not talking about <laughs> i'm talking about man that's 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 pretty touching dang oh oh man oh someone someone got onions in here y'all get them y'all get them onions away <laughs> all right all right y'all know what i'm talking about uh next to that guys is gonna be macross or Robotech for the uninitiated. But I used to love Macross. The story of, uh, well, oh, shoot, what is his name? Rick Hunter? Was that his name? I think that was his name, Rick Hunter. It's been a long time since I watched Macross. Uh, yeah. And then the Macross Plus movie is one of my favorite anime movies with Asamu. Asamu is a great character, and I love the entire story of that. Especially at the end sequence when you get to see Asamu. Uh, his Entrati buddy, I can't remember his name of, you know, he's piloting the one ship. But they're flying around, fighting the AI uh, Valkyrie. And Macross itself, the battleship Macross, is just there like, bah, 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 and they just can't knock down a song, and I love it. It's a great uh, movie. But the, the fourth, and probably... For me personally, guys, I would put it at number two. Roroni Kenshin is probably number one. But the second biggest anime for me, and you guessed it, Cowboy Bebop. I love the story of Spike Spiegel. That's one of the best story arcs I've ever seen. And if you guys don't know his story, uh, spoiler warning, you may want to skip ahead just a few seconds, but he's an ex-mafia, I believe, hitman? Or maybe it was a bodyguard but he goes against the wishes of his mafia that he's entwined with and yeah kind of goes from there and that's where vicious comes from and all that and there's a real good backstory um again guys cowboy bebop's one of my favorites it's it's in my heart pretty solid and black chain shadow strife I take a lot of inspiration from Cowboy Bebop, guys. Shibaru, the main characters, uh, I took a lot of his personality from Spike Spiegel. Uh, on top of that, uh, if you guys didn't notice in uh, some of the pictures from the Cowboy Bebop, but Jet Black, his arm is robotic. That's cyberpunk, baby. That's, you know... Well, I don't want to say cyberpunk like cyberpunk 2077, because obviously... Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 is still portrayed as being on Earth, whereas Cowboy Bebop's in outer space somewhere. <laughs> I don't know, uh, like, all the locations that they go to. But I think it's, it may be here in our solar system. I don't, I don't remember where they actually have it located. It's been a while. It's been a while. But I took a lot of inspiration from Cowboy Bebop. And to go with that, guys, obviously I took inspiration from Metal Gear and a lot of the stuff I do, Metal Gear is one of my favorite video games for Black Chain Shadow Strife. And on top of Metal Gear, I took a lot of inspiration from Naruto. And Naruto is probably, in current age, my favorite anime period. It's just, there's to me nothing that beats Naruto. I love that series. Uh, Boruto, eh, I kind of... Uh, fell off the edge with Boruto just because there's so much filler and I'm waiting for it to get back to the main story. So I check in every now and then to see if they're actually addressing the story um, with the, uh, shoot, I forgot their name, the Atsuki, Atsutsaki, At 
forgot how to pronounce it. Kaguya and uh, Momoshinki. I think it's Momoshinki. I think that's what it's called. I don't remember. But anyways, yeah. I'm waiting for them to address those characters and the connection of uh, Naruto or Naruto, uh, Sasuke, uh, and the eye that Boruto ends up having at some point. Which I get it, guys. They're long descendants of uh, the Sage of the Six Paths, I think they, he was called. Yeah, I think it was Sage of Six Paths. Uh, I get their descendants of him, and he was one of the Atsuki, I believe. And that's going to really kill me if I'm not pronouncing that. I think it's Atsuki, but we'll move on from there. But yeah, guys, Black Chain Shadow Strife takes a lot of inspiration from those three things I just named. And yeah, Cowboy Bebop is one of my favorite animes as well. And I don't understand why we feel or modern day culture feels the need to change things. My parents used to say when I was a young, uh, when I was a child, the children's, um, that they're going to take the heroes you love and they're going to kill them. They're going to turn them into the bad guy. They said that with the Mission Impossible movie, Tom Cruise, the first one, where Peter Phelps ends up being the bad guy. They said the same thing I'm saying now. And I, I see that all over the place now and it's really starting to piss me off. Because I thought they were just being silly. It's like, oh, well, you know, things got to get updated. But it's like, no, you grew up with these characters. You identify a part of your soul with the story that this character has. And when it's changed and manipulated for people for whatever reason, that's, that's a problem, guys. That's a big problem. But anyways. So, if you guys notice, uh, originally I was planning on yesterday... Uh, well, by the time you see this, it's going to be September 7th, which will be a Tuesday. Um, this past Sunday, which was the 5th, uh, I was planning on releasing the first episode of Black Chain Shadow Strife. Guys, it's just not going to happen. I'm putting way too much care, detail, and effort into uh, the last few seconds of the cartoon. And you just wait, guys. It's... Oh, I wish I could show you, but it, it would ruin it, guys. It would ruin it if I showed you anything. But I'm doing some pretty cool things. I'm making a fluid fight sequence. Um, I've got, obviously, swords going crazy. Uh, these big mechanized robots going crazy. And a new character that's introduced at the end of the episode that I haven't shown you guys anything about. But a new character comes in, and it's just phenomenal. Like, uh... I'm happy with the results I'm getting, the work I've put in. I'm, I get to see everything, and I've even got like a a, a work in progress, a WIP as we call it, uh, where it looks great. And I'm gonna give you guys a heads up that again, I think I've mentioned this before, but this is gonna be kind of like a three part thing on this first episode. You're gonna see flash animation at the beginning, which I'm no longer doing that anymore. When you see the last sequence of it, that's it. No more. Goodbye, Flash Animation. Moho Animation, you done pissed me off. Goodbye. Uh, then just after that, you're going to see my frame-by-frame frame starting with TV Paint. And, I, and there might have been one or two sequences done with, uh, shoot, what's the other one? Clip Studios Animation. Uh, I'm not as big of a fan with Clip Studios anymore. I pretty much prefer TV Paint now. But I was still trying to figure things out so the animation isn't as smooth. Uh, there's a sequence on a rooftop where it's not that smooth. Uh, there's two characters kind of interacting uh, at the sink that's not all that smooth. And then the beginning of the end of the episode, and you guys will see when it comes out, it's a little rough. Hang in there. Get to the fight sequence, guys. I figured out a lot of stuff, and I want you guys to see that. I want you to see kind of uh, my timeline of, okay, he's starting here, he's figuring things out here, he's got it figured out here, and I can only get better from here, guys, and that's the part that's got me super excited. Uh, I'll go ahead and tell you, I, I don't put shading into a lot of stuff. Uh, I'm not going to have shading in the first episode. Just It's just the way it is, guys. It takes way more time. Uh, to go in and add shading than just do a basic coloring go basic coloring go 
Uh, the second episode, I'm going to try and do some shade work. And the second episode is going to be a little bit slower. It's not going to be anywhere as action-packed as this first episode is. And you guys will see what I mean by that when you finally get to see the first episode. But going forward with it, guys, I'm not going to put a release date on the first episode. I'm just, I'm not going to. When I finish it, I'll post it. And you guys will see it. I'll probably... Uh, I'm 13 sequences out from finishing, guys. 13 sequences, that's not a lot. It's a lot of work, but it's not a lot in terms of like, uh, of just sitting down and doing it. Uh, my biggest problem is I work a, you know, a job. I have a 40 plus hour a week job. And that's my biggest problem is taking time to sit down and do that. And you know, there are other things in life I wanna enjoy. Uh, like today being, uh, Labor Day, I wanted to sit down and watch uh, The Dark Knight Rises, the Christopher Nolan uh, Batman movie. I love that movie. Uh, even though Tom Hardy is a great actor, but we're not going to get into this right now because I'm just going to go off on a tangent and I want to end here, guys. Uh, you will know when the first episode comes out because I'll try and have an update video like this uh, right before it comes out talking about a few things more in depth. Then I'll release it, and then I'll release a uh, podcast update video alongside it, and I'll talk about uh, what was going on in the creative process with the episode. And I'll kind of like I did with uh, Blue Collar Life. There is a uh, podcast video that goes with it when I released it. But yeah, we're gonna cut it here, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you, thank you, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Later.